This is Market Week Live, May 17th, 2024. Information and support for traders and investors. Welcome, everybody. People are pouring in the room, and we have lots of people out there watching on YouTube. So great to see you all. This is a little bit of legal that we have to do. It says that everything we do uh, and show you as far as analysis uh, goes, it's really for education and entertainment, and uh, it's not investment advice. Uh, everything we do oral or written uh, or anything that we show on our websites is to provide information you can use uh, with uh, your discussions with your investment advisors and your investment decision makers. It's not a substitute for advice from an investment advisor. We always want you to consult your own trading plan and professionals before making any investment or trading decisions. And you can refer to our full terms, legal and uh, disclaimers at uh, www.asslim.com. Your host today, we have our full analytical team. That's me. Uh, this is a big week for me. We are three days away from my 50-year anniversary that I became a member of the CBOE. So yes, one of the few out there that's still trading after 50 years. It's mind-boggling. We have Matt Serpy. He's been with me for a couple of decades. Arvi has been with me, well, since I was way back on Tasty Trade, a regular call in person, an avid uh, student of our work, and now one of the experts in the world in cycle analysis. And Katie Anagostos, uh, who is our expert in option trading, a uh, massively great cycle analysis uh, uh, teacher that she does when she puts that all together with uh, the work on the Tasty Trade platform. So Katie is just super great. And you can learn all about us uh, at uh, on our website. Uh, go to uh, AskSlim.com about AskSlim, meet the team. We have some interviews on there, and it's really interesting stuff. So go there and you'll learn all about us. Uh, if you want to contact us about memberships or this website issues, write to team at asklim.com. And anything on our content, information and education analysis, first time special upgrade and upgrades, uh, we can uh, help you with that. Write to Matt at asklim.com. Uh, and this is what's coming up in the show. I'm going to bring you my opening comments, and then we're going to bring you trade planning with the SLIM team. We're all going to trade, uh, show you a trade idea. We'll show you our total approach to trade planning. Matt's going to review uh, the ASLIM services. You can see the great depth of our content and a great special and a little workshop that's coming up that you really want to participate in. Uh, and uh, then we'll bring our express round with Q&A, people putting uh, questions in there already. And uh, remember, our level one to four members are invited uh, to be able to come uh, through the Zoom link and uh, put questions up. So they're doing that right now. And that's great. And I'm going to bring you a uh, stock market analysis. Uh, we'll look at the S&P 500 multiple time frame analysis with our proprietary indicators, the market condition monitor, uh, all of that uh, coming up. So that's going to be great stuff for you. Uh, how to watch the show? Well, uh, a lot of you are there on YouTube. So if you're not a premium member, uh, you just you can watch it on, on YouTube uh, on uh, our channel, which is Ask Slim Team. Uh, and uh, for those of you uh, that are premium members, you could send a link to participate. So those of you that are, you know, watching as a free member, non-member uh, on YouTube uh, using the Ask Slim Team channel, uh, become a level one to four member and you'll be able to participate in the Q&A like you're going to see coming up. Uh, if you want to learn more about AskSlim.com, get acquainted, uh, you can get our daily information by becoming a level one member. That's only $45 for three months. On YouTube, please do subscribe to this channel. Click the notification bell so you know when we put up videos. And of course, give us a thumbs up because that helps us. And on X, follow me at AskSlim. Matt can help you with anything about our memberships. Write to him at Matt at AskSlim.com. This is my opening commentary for May 17, 2024. Well, the stock market index has had another solid week to the upside. Big news for the week was really on the inflation front. Um, and the news really wasn't that great. The PPI was much hotter than expected. It was up five tenths of a percent on the headline number, expecting only two tenths of a percent. But there was a downside revision from the previous month, which just tells you the numbers that they put out are pretty worthless. 
Uh, and that what took it down from uh, one tenth of a percent to minus one tenth of a percent. Uh, and then the CPI came out one tenth better. It was up three tenths of a percent versus four tenths of a percent. And all of that seems like it's a bunch of nonsense, like anything like that should bring anything uh, to the upside uh, or the downside on the markets because it's not really <clears throat> very much changed. But we do see that inflation is still really staying up there year over year, about three and a half percent. Powell said, we may need more time uh, for the interest rates to work. And he says, the economy and the labor markets are strong and inflation is stubborn. But he said, he doesn't really think he needs high rates in order to um, get the inflation numbers down. So pretty much saying that we'll stay where we are for just a little while until something changes. Uh, the uh, that wasn't good news either. Not bad news, not news that should have made the market go up the way that it did. But in this environment, investors jump on anything that they can deem as a positive. And Tuesday and Wednesday, we had very, very good gains to the upside in the stock market. I want to uh, take you right now to our uh, day trader service just really quickly because I want to do something a little different to review the week because so many of our members are active traders. So I thought it would be great just, just do a quick uh, review of the week, go through some of the days in here. And how do I do that? With our replay system right over here. For uh, our uh, members that are in day traders, um, we do... Uh, do a, a, essentially a copy of what's going on all day long uh, in our uh, trader cockpit, day trader cockpit. It's amazing. I'll show you that. Uh, the 13th, really, that was Monday. Not much to go through. It was just a very slow day waiting for the inflation numbers. Let's take a look at the 14th. Yes, this is our day trader cockpit. Uh, and you can see what we're doing is copying it in this bar across uh, let's me go through the whole day. What's on here? Well, the impulse monitor, my eight minute trading strategy, which is really for scalpers and this price zone roadmap that Matt does an incredible job on all of the time, which gives you support, resistances, acceleration zones, uh, just a, a great way to really know the conditions of the market. So I'm just going to zip through this very quickly. And you can see the market opened uh, to the upside. And uh, when you see turbo on that you see right over there, <clears throat> It means that there are brief moments of uh, buying or selling that's coming in with some intensity. So uh, you can see where the price is here on the eight minute charts, and you can see where the price is here on the 15 minute charts. And this is a key line right in here. This is our uh, day trader scalper timing line, essentially, on the eight minute strategy. So I'm always focused on that. You can see the market in here where the impulse monitor is green uh, was uh, strong, They're looking for another upside move. And there they start to move to the upside and look at them take off as that turbo was on. You can see that. And uh, the eight minute strategy, all green, and the market moving to the upside. It got a little rest in here as it started to pull back and then just kind of sat there. And this is really a key thing because you see the Dow turbo on on the downside. This is where you really get an idea of uh, the different sectors of the market. If you want to do a pair trade, you want to be short the weak ones and long the stronger ones. And that really gives you a good idea in there. So you can see the market just uh, chopping around uh, right in there, uh, moving just sideways as they were waiting for uh, some news to come out, moving to the downside there. And then uh, it just a choppy day until it began to take off right there on the news. And you can see everything turns green and the market continues to move up right there. Turbo on uh, right over there, as you could see, that was at uh, two something. And this was that strong day. And it just kept you look right over here where it turned you onto the long side and kept you on the long side. That's what this day trader uh, uh, app does. It just, just keeps you on the right direction of the market, tells you what's strong, what's weak, where the acceleration zones are, where the support and resistances are. So you could see we had this strong day after the news came out uh, on the inflation numbers and Powell talking. Uh, and that was uh, the look at Tuesday. Here is Wednesday right over here. I'm just going to go through this quickly. And you can see strong day in the morning. 
as it began to move up. Look at those turbo on right there as the market is strong and moving up and continuing to move up. Pretty key, as you see, it keeps you on the long side on that day, keeping you on the long sides. Eight minute strategy, bullish, all of this really long. And all of a sudden there, you could see where these started to turn over. And it tells you, well, that trade is over if you're on the long side. And here it kind of turned neutral, as you can see, but then it started to get positive again. And you could see turning up again, right there through the acceleration zone. So actually through resistance on a very strong NASDAQ. And uh, then you start to get a little bit of correction towards the end of the day, but a super strong day, as you can see right there, as you had these big upside moves through the acceleration zones and strong day there. Uh, we'll go to the 16th right there. And you can see in here that it was a day that was kind of choppy in the morning and then the turbo is going on. So you can see these buying is really coming in on the uh, spiders and the QQQ. And look at this trade. I mean, just fantastic. It kept you on the long side as it's moving through the acceleration zones. These are blue now because these are fi figured on FIB extensions right there. And you can see we had this very, very strong day. And then it began to just kind of falter and give you an idea that you just don't want to be in any trades at that point there. And uh, just a day that started to correct. And look what's happening later in the day right over here as it a strong day began to give you a downside trade. And you can see those turbos going on. Man, this really gives you a good idea of market conditions as you look at it right there. So uh, that's where it began to turn negative, uh, neutral right there and a good little bearish trade for traders there on the uh on the 16th on thursday here is friday now we only have part of the day in here so far and you can see it's been kind of negative early in the day there as we had uh some selling coming in early in the day you can see the trade right in here nice keeps you on the negative side everything seems to be uh at this point in the in midday right over here keeping you on the bearish side but not you know it's been modest declines in here there let's see it turns neutral right there and you uh begin when these turn yellow with a down arrow it says that it's neutral but there's some little edge that it's going to turn to the downside again when you see that, it's giving you that little sign in there, all kinds of neutral markets right in here today, uh, and uh, not much going on here today. A little negative uh, turn right there, some selling is coming in, as you can see, and the market's moving down again into the support level and more selling coming in here in midday. So kind of a choppy day today. That was important. I wanted to show you that's a little different way to look at the market. Uh, as uh, we reviewed the whole week there. Now, you can actually have that by becoming a day trader member, uh, and uh, you can uh, write to Matt if you need any information about that. So uh, it's a great way to go back and to you know look at how you set up your own trades, what the market conditions were at different time, uh, and just to get a good, great sense for which ones you want to be long, which ones you want to be short, where support resistances are. Fantastic. So give that one a try if you're not a day trader member. So that was the look at what happened so far during this week, a little longer look than I normally took, but I kind of wanted to review that because it's really a great way to look at it and how you could stay on some of those short-term trades throughout the day. Uh, so the stock market two weeks ago, we said our work showed the highest probability was one more decline was coming into late May. Then as the indexes moved up and through resistances and our indicators turned positive, we started to recognize that something was changing and our analysis was adjusted. So now the period of strength that we expected to come in June and July has begun. I mean, that's really clear. And that decline that we expected that would make a new low or test the previous low, now based on the structures that we see in the market, is only set up for a mild pullback and then higher prices after that. I'll show all of that to you a little bit later in the show. Stocks for the week, well, indexes on average up about 2 to 3%. Uh, the bond market, uh, 30s up uh, about 1 and an eighth points. 10-year yields down about 9 basis points. Gold moving to the upside here strongly, up 45 on the week, $45. <laughs> 
Silver, just absolutely huge. That's up $2.50 on the week, moving right to the targets that we talked about. And uh, we thought that silver would be one of the big movers. I talked a lot about the silver miners and the, the ETFs, SIL, SILJ, and accumulating the hard metals. Uh, I've done all of that, and I certainly hope a lot of you have done that also. <clears throat> Dollar loses about a, a seven tenths of a percent, very much in line with our analysis that we have shown. And oil getting a bounce in here, and I think it is setting up for a minor upside move. But then there's going to be a lot of downside risk some weeks out there. So uh, right now, there's just a window of time you could get some favorable activity in the energies. If you want to get all our analysis on uh, all of our um, on all the markets that we look at, uh, make sure you watch the Future Speak show. Arvi does a spectacular job with that every single Wednesday on the video where he goes over weekly and daily charts on everything. So that is my opening commentary on the markets. We're going to do trade planning with the Ask Slim team from analysis to the trade idea. This is where we look at our charts and we say, this is the reason why we think something is going to happen. And we try to give you our projections and uh, also where support resistances are, the timing for all of that. That's the benefit of doing uh, multiple time frame analysis. And I'm going to start this out by looking at the Bitcoin market. So let's take a look here. This is Bitcoin uh, weekly chart on the left, daily chart on the right. And what we have in here, I'll just blow this up, is a bullish uh, looking chart uh, as uh, you see the cycle right in here. And this is what's called an extreme right hand translation. And this is really a swamping. In other words, there is a longer uh, uh, cycle that's in the monthly that was pushing up in the monthly chart. And that didn't allow this to correct very much right in here. And the same thing happened right in here. This was a decline of 23.6%. Now, I talked about the fact that monthly corrections are generally 40% to 70-something percent to the downside in the Bitcoin market. But this one was pretty shallow at only 23.6%. This gives me some sense that the monthly pattern still has not corrected. And that's likely to come sometime way out over here into this July through September period. I'll talk about that uh, later on uh, in, uh, in, in, an, in a future show when I look at the monthly chart. So I'll be looking at the Bitcoin monthly chart in the workshop that's coming up on Tuesday that Matt is going to announce. So uh, that's uh, important information. In the meantime, you can see we're only two weeks into this advance. Generally, they last much longer than that because this is a bullish configuration. This is supposed to turn up and test this high. That would be the highest probability uh, that I can see there uh, as it moves up to uh, that area of uh, the high uh, near 74,415. So this would say to me, I want to look for bullish trades. I, there's a little bit of a caveat, and that is this reversal scout is still negative, And that has not turned up where the shorter term momentum conditions have been improving. So that's still important to turn to the upside. So our targets for up here is uh, 70,700 back up to this high 74,415. So what I want to do is I want to look for some upside movement in here. Uh, and uh, then you'll be able to see what I'm looking for as an entry level. So you can see the cycle patterns that are right in here. What's really interesting is that these harmonic families are broken into 25 bars on the third and 75 bars on the full dominant harmonic. What that says to me, and I want you to see the minor thirds that are right in here and here and here, this is that first minor third of the big cycle. These are the minor supports right there. And just get a closer look again so that you can see. And uh, I didn't want to get that close, did I? Let's go right here. Okay. So what that says to me is that somewhere right in this time frame right over here, and now you're in these resistances. This is the 61.8 to 78.6. You're likely to have a little stalling going on in here. That's what I want to happen because I want to get the long side entry somewhere over here. So supports, this is the 23.6% at about 65,100. Then you get down under here under 63,550 
or 62,350. Uh, These areas right over here are what I consider to be the buy zones. Now, based on the timing, you can see I put in this green oval right over there. This is kind of the range and time that I expect to get the buying opportunity right there uh, as it gets into these supports and then moving up. I don't want to buy it here. What I want to do is wait for a more favorable entry. Yes, there's risk. It's going to run away, and I'm not going to be able to make this trade. But especially since the weekly momentum is still negative, and you can see I put that note right in there for you to see, uh, weekly momentum still negative, and it has work to do and likely pull back into support. I want to get this buying opportunity right here, which I think is then going to send the market up again into that area of the resistances up here. Again, 70,700 to uh, 74,400 would be the target. And this is my trade, really an intermediate trade because we're probably looking out uh, about uh, six weeks out of here uh, where I think it's going to have the risk of making the high. Uh, so my focus is on the fact that this is the second week up right over here in the cycle. This is likely to form a bullish cycle right in here, giving us a buy opportunity and then moving up. Again, my buying opportunity looks like it comes end of May to early June, sometime in this target zone right over here and then to the upside. So that is my trade, my analysis on Bitcoin. And I'm gonna turn this over to Katie to look at EWZ. Okay, I will share my screen. Can you see the weekly chart of EWZ? Looks good. Yes. Okay, great. So this is the Brazilian ETF and this is the weekly chart. We have a 31 bar cycle bracket here to represent the average cycle length. And we're in the final week of the weekly cycle timing window. That's the period of time of plus or minus about three weeks around this ideal cycle trough. And it's shown by these vertical blue dashed lines. Now we believe that the um, intermediate cycle low formed here. And we have the reversal scout having turned green now. So that shows positive momentum to help us confirm the intermediate low. Uh, because this prior cycle retraced all the way down to the 78.6% FIB, the probabilities favor EWZ not making a higher cycle high in this cycle. So we're projecting to about 33.5 to 34.5, which is this area from the top of the resistance zone up to the 78.6% FIB. Switching over to the daily chart, we have a 44 bar dominant cycle that is broken into minor half cycles. Here is our short term low that corresponds to that intermediate low on the weekly chart. We got the move up into the rising phase of this new cycle. Our reversal scout turned green first and then the slim ribbon went from negative to neutral to positive. Uh, we got this retracement down into the support zone right around the time of this minor cycle trough. It is still trying to put in a bottom there. So now we're looking for a move back up in the rising phase of the second minor half cycle, targeting the area from about 32.75 to 33.25, which is the area from this recent high up to this short term 78.6% FIB. And notice that we are getting a momentum continuation to the upside signal on the Slim Ribbon PO. Now, in terms of bullish options strategies that we could employ, I would favor a long premium strategy because uh, EWZ is a relatively inexpensive underlying, and it's going to be difficult to collect a substantial premium if you're doing a uh, short side trade, short in terms of short uh, short options. It'll be hard to collect enough premium, even if you're doing something right at the money. So I would suggest just a simple long call or to avoid paying for the extrinsic value in the options, you could set up a zebra, which is an acronym that we use for a zero extrinsic back ratio. I'm going to record an options trade idea video for our members showing those strategies. And if you would like to see that, you can consider becoming a level three or four Ask Slim member. Turn it over to Arvi. All right, Katie, thanks so much.
Great job. Let's go ahead and hop over to UNP. I'll show you a long idea I'm looking at here. All right, so this is our weekly and daily cycle analysis for UNP. On the intermediate term time frame, what we're looking at here is a bullish overall turnaround uh, that's happening here in UNP. We're, uh, first, we saw this higher low basing cycle that formed, and then we saw uh, a series of higher cycle highs and higher cycle lows from that point. So right now, just based on that, uh, we would be looking for a move back through this old high at 258.66 in this next intermediate term rising phase. Uh, there is a bottom that was due to form here, 412, right around 520. And uh, if it can move through that old high, we have this zone here from 264 to 274, which is our target zone above that. If we jump over to the daily time frame, you'll see that this is giving a pullback here. We are looking for this to hold right around this zone here from 242.90 to 239.20 or so. If this gets a daily close below the, the minor 78.6 Fib at uh, 236.56, that would render this idea a loser. And we're targeting a move back towards the 78.6 on the upside and this old cycle high at 258.66 and then 252.07 is that 78.6. So the risk on this idea would be right around uh, 6.30. We're targeting a move of around 9.50 or so. Uh, what we're looking for is for this cycle to actually translate positively and put in a higher low basing cycle if this is that key intermediate term bottom which uh, i i do think it is right here and we look for this to then turn back up to the upside and go for that all-time high or i should say that old swing high sorry in that next rising phase and keep in mind that next low is due right around the middle part of june okay so that's our look there at the long idea that we have in unp and i'm going to hand this off to you matt all right, thank you, RV. Great work, team. It's always fun to watch the analyst team put together the trade ideas. All right, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so as Slim mentioned, my uh, segment here is on uh, MS Morgan Stanley, and we are going to use the Ask Slim methodology to answer some of the core trade planning questions put together this trade idea. So the outlook period is uh, four to six weeks, so it's intermediate time frame. And now we're going to talk about the long side or bullish bias that I have and, and how I came to that conclusion. So we're going to start here on, on the weekly chart because this is an intermediate time frame outlook. So the bias will be driven predominantly by this uh, weekly chart here. And I'm going to start with this cycle here where we had the, uh, really a major bottom that was put in in late October in MS. And you can see that our reversal scout here turned up. That typically confirms that we have an important low in place. So that's a confirmation for us of uh, that cycle low. And then we had a rising phase that was incredibly uh, powerful in magnitude. And it came through, you can see right here, it came through the prior 78.6 uh, retracement level, signaling to us that there was a repairing going on of that cycle structure, moving it back and warning of a positive shift. And uh, then what we had is got up into that peaking phase, came uh, close to that minor uh, cycle peak over here. We had a pullback, but it was a typical pullback into, into the uh, intermediate support zones. And then the final advance actually was quite powerful in a time frame where you usually get a, a uh, corrective period and we finished uh, this cycle with a right-hand translation and the pullback in the cycle timing got us down to about that 38.2% retracement area. So a typical pullback, very strong uh, finish to the cycle uh, in terms of the configuration. And you can see in this new cycle, the rising phase has also been quite strong in the early part of it. So this is what we have on the, on the weekly chart here, very strong finish and continuing in this rising phase. I'm going to jump over to the uh, daily chart just to make sure that there isn't anything that I might be uh, missing in terms of uh, the, the uh, short duration uh, details. You can see here that this prior cycle, I'm going to uh, back this out, zoom out a little bit here. Uh, in this prior cycle here, we had a, uh, what would have looked like a fairly uh, deep retracement breaking through that 78.6, but this is why you do multiple time frame analysis and you want to keep that dominant uh, picture in mind 
because if we were focused on that dominant overall cycle structure, it would have suggested to us that any corrective period that we had in the shorter duration time frame, that short term daily cycle was likely to be short lived. And that's exactly what we saw. Uh, even though we got that uh, break to that 78.6, it immediately rallied, uh, letting us know that that dominant uh, weekly cycle uh, was showing its influence. The key thing here on the daily is that we had a cycle a peak that was, and then a breakout occurred. And again, very strong a look uh, at this uh, daily cycle, uh, no signs of a peak yet. So putting all of the sum of the evidence together on that weekly and daily, obviously uh, we have positive cycle structures, we have positive momentum. We are relatively early in the rising phase on uh, the weekly cycle. And pulling over one other key factor here is if we look at the XLF, which represents the spider select financial sector, uh, you can see here that it also is has a very strong right-hand translation that finished the uh, cycle low uh, timing window. We had a minor pullback here, basically to the 23.6. And uh, we have now seen a multiple breakouts to new all-time highs. So this is in the early rising phase. We have the reverse scout just turning up. So we, we have this correlation between the overall sector lining up with one of the symbols within that sector. So all of that very positive. So what does this mean in terms of target zones, the pattern structures, uh, swing high, swing low analysis are suggesting this first target zone of 102.45 to 103.85 and then a secondary target of 105.78 to 107.69, again, in that intermediate time frame uh, outlook. Finally, we wanna talk about, since we do have a uh, suggestible situation in terms of a tradable edge at this time, what are the signals that would suggest this trade setup is a go? Well, each one of us as a trader is likely to have our own style in terms of different buy or entry points and approaches to that position building uh, but here are a few ideas. So let me pull over MS here on another grid. Grabbing that right now. Okay, so this is a multi time frame grid. We call this our chart streams raw grid here. From left to right, we have our weekly, daily, two hour and 15 minute. Because I'm talking about an intermediate outlook, I'm really focused on the weekly, the daily, and the two hour. And in terms of signals, would be more focused on the daily in the two hours. So what would that mean? Uh, we have the slim ribbon projection uh, oscillator here, our slim ribbon PO, we call it, which lets us know when we have a dominant momentum condition and the likelihood of a continuation of that dominant uh, momentum condition. As you can see here, the slim ribbon turned positive uh, color coding, the candles green. Then we had this minor pullback. So the projection oscillator is measuring that pullback and the, the depth uh, and duration of that oversold condition. But what it's really doing is seeing if there's a shift in the momentum and if there isn't, it lets us know when there's a likely continuation of that dominant condition. You can see how that played out here. So right now we are having this little pullback and uh, even though it looks like it's very extended, which it is, but at the same time, it's extremely strong. So if this was to turn up again, again, based on your own uh, trading style and how you build positions, uh, this would be an indication of a continuation. And then over here on the two hour, you can see the same thing as we have the Slim Ribbon uh, PO uh, marking when there's these continuations. So this is a perfect textbook example of how to use these indicators when you have these strong trends in place. And as Slim was pointing out, and we all talk about, we wanna be on the right side. That's number one, it keeps us out of trouble. And then we wanna be there when those impulse moves continue. And that's what these indicators and this overall methodology is really meant to do. So another opportunity would be if we saw this reversal scout turn back up, uh, that could be another continuation, at least in the near term or short term. Uh, in the in the on the daily chart, uh, there's obviously going to be a, a, a pullback. Maybe it comes down to that 23.6 somewhere within that slim ribbon. And then we watch for that uh, two hour to turn back positive, signaling another move on the upside. So that's what we have going on right here with MS. Back to you, Slim. All right, fantastic job by the team. Just got a great idea of how we look at the analysis and then come up with trade ideas based on that. We're always looking for how to establish the highest probabilities 
don't forget, we're going to be wrong sometimes, but we're, I believe, and I think the numbers show, we're right more often than we're wrong, and that's really the key. Great work. All right, going to turn this back over to Matt. He's going to bring you a review of the special we're running right now and an, an announcement of a little workshop that we have coming up in this week. Matt, take it. All right, Slim. Okay, I'll be as brief as I can. Uh, however, I got a lot of uh, important information to quickly share here. So we do offer uh, a number of uh, premium memberships at Ask Slim. Uh, for those of you that aren't members yet, uh, we do have uh, membership options that range from a free account to actually for day traders. So each one of these memberships are designed to offer you technical analysis services trade planning tools and education for, as I mentioned, various trading styles. And right now we have a special offer. We only run this one once a year uh, in, in terms of a one month non-recurring trial for our level four, which is our top tier uh, membership level. Right now it is $99 uh, for one month. And it also includes access to our market conditions monitor. So I will give you a brief tour of the market conditions mon monitor here in just a second. Uh, but level four, what's really important to remember with level four is that it does three dis has three distinct advantages. So what the Ask Slim analyst team is showing you today in terms of the charts that you are uh, witnessing us uh, demonstrate on are exactly what you would be able to receive if you were a level four member. So that's number one, is that if you have the Thinkorswim platform, you will be able to integrate our uh, charts, uh, our custom charts with all of our analysis on there and all of our proprietary studies. So what that means is that we share our links to these charts. You can generate uh, links and we share these links with our members. You can then open those up on your own platform. As soon as you open those up on your own platform, they look identical to what you see us demonstrating. And on top of that, you can get under the hood. You can make your own adjustments. You can set your own alerts. Bottom line is you get the uh, the chart that we have, the studies that we have, it is the best way to uh, align yourself with what we're doing and take full advantage of the methodology uh, that we have. So that's number one. Number two is that uh, you as a level four member get access to all of the uh, services, content, products that we have as a level four member. So a level four dashboard it looks uh, overwhelming, but at the end of the day, what this is all about is providing you with tools so that you can simply fill out that trade planning uh, questionnaire for yourself. So all these different services all boil down to being able to put together a trading plan and being able to answer the questions of what's my outlook period in terms of my trading style, uh, what is my directional bias, how do I determine directional bias, uh, and then going from there to key levels, so on and so forth. So everything that we do here is all about you having the conviction to put together your own trading plans in a very objective um, uh, approach. Uh, number three uh, with our level four membership is the market conditions monitor. This is an amazing uh, tool, trade planning tool. It utilizes our cutting edge proprietary momentum analysis technology. And what it's doing is all throughout the session in live time, it is monitoring our momentum indicators, the slim ribbon and the reversal scout. And it's indicating when there are changes. And on top of that, we have programmed it to uh, fit the trading styles and the time frame outlook periods that you're looking for. So for example, you can, you can choose anything from intraday to intermediate. So if I'm focused on intraday for whether I'm an intraday trader or short-term trader or even an intermediate time frame trader, which I'll explain in a second why this is valuable, it can assist your trade planning process. For that specific trader type, uh, what you can do is you can sort. So there's over 115 symbols in here. Uh, the most liquid stocks, ETFs, then we have uh, the uh, SPY, the Qs, and uh, IWM to represent and DIA to represent the indexes but you simply click on trade condition, uh, trade setup condition, and you can sort by the most bullish and the most bearish uh, conditions uh, at that moment. And so that's really the most important thing is if you're looking for what's happening right now, you're able to do that with the market condition monitor and you can click on a specific symbol and you can see 
uh, in those multiple time frames that we that our system is tracking uh, in terms of the intraday, three minute, 15 minute, two hour, you can see what those are. You can see what that trade setup condition is for both the reversal scout and the slim ribbon. And you can, you can shift it into the near term, which will carry then the 15 minute, the two hour and the daily and go into short term, so on and so forth. Very, very powerful tool to be able to, as we talked about, number one, we wanna be on the right side. What does that mean? So to stay out of trouble as a trader, you want to be in alignment with dominant momentum. So we've created a formula, an algorithm using our two most dependable uh, momentum indicators to do that for us so that we can track what that momentum is at that time and, and not be against that. Going against uh, momentum and against trend, against cycle structure is uh, really where you get yourself into trouble. And ultimately the opportunities come when you're in alignment uh, because you do have time and you have price on your side and you're likely to have that continuation opportunity. And this is updating all on its own throughout the market session. And you, again, you can sort very quickly uh, for those symbols that you're interested in. You can jump to a short term, do the same thing, just like I'm doing here. And if you find a symbol that you're interested in, so let's just scroll down here for a second. A lot of very bullish uh, symbols going on here in the uh, short term. I'm going to go to uh, near term, give us an idea of how we can use this for trade ideas. Again, so much bullish activity. It's pretty amazing, actually, to see all this. But let's just say you're waiting for a setup in a visa. So what you can do here is, and this is what's, this is the, sort of the big announcement is next week on Friday, we'll rele be releasing our pro version of the MCM. That was meant to be a standalone a product that we are going to include it in level four. It's going to come with an extremely robust a notification system, a real-time notification system that you'll be able to uh, use on your own desktop. And you'll be able to notify yourself when you're looking for specific conditions. So let's say that, again, we had you had your eye on Visa and you wanted to be notified uh, for a either near-term, short-term uh, setup. And right here, we're looking at the 15-minute. So I'm just going to pull over this trade get trade grid to give you a sense of what I'm talking about here of how powerful this is going to be. So right now, Visa has a negative reversal scout and slim ribbon in the 15 minute. We talk about we want to be trading against momentum. So right now, I wouldn't have a trade set up if it was me for a near term uh, opportunity. I would, I'd like to see the momentum turn back up, particularly uh, the slim ribbon. So what you'll be able to do is uh, set up a notification for yourself when that is uh, going to occur. So you'd be able to pick the uh, time frame that you're interested to be able to see this go back to either slightly bullish or bullish or very bullish. Furthermore, which, which is being built in is the ability to set alerts specifically on indicators, which has never been uh, done before for uh, Ask Slim. So you'd be able to come into the uh, market conditions monitor, go to a specific time frame, a specific symbol, and a specific indicator and set an alert for yourself so you'll be notified when that change occurs. Very, very powerful uh, tool here. And again, it's all about putting uh, situations in high probability for yourself where you're trading with momentum and you can participate in that next directional move. So again, this is gonna be with level four. This is uh, available right now, the MCM is, and we will have the uh, uh, special offer is going to run for probably another week or two. So there is some time, but to take full advantage of what's going on right now, you can jump in and you can sign up online right at askslim.com, or you can reach out directly to me if you have questions. Okay, so that is the special that we have going on. One other thing to note, which is important, is that we have a special workshop coming up on Tuesday. So this is uh, important because this is a new series that we're doing. It is called Behind the Cycle Analysis Curtain with SLIM. And it's really, it's a, a first of its kind situation where uh, those attendees that are, are coming, they'll have the rare opportunity to observe SLIM in action and listen to him go through his thinking process as he updates the charts live. Okay, so typically what we show you as today is a finished product. And what Slim's going to be doing is he's going to run through. Uh, so there's a tag team that happens with FutureSpeak where Slim does uh, the charts, RV re reviews the charts, 
uh, and then RV then presents future speak. But what you're going to see is the, the first step in the process of Slim going through all of the charts. So that's our energy futures, currency futures, precious metals, crypto, treasuries, stock indexes, grain softs, VIX. So this is going to be Slim starting from scratch, from the beginning of looking at these uh, on Tuesday uh, for the first time. Obviously, he's doing analysis weekly basis, but now you're going to be able to jump into his chair with him and be able to see his process as he goes, as he makes the updates, and you're going to hear him think out loud. Uh, so this isn't showing you a finished product. This is going to be him actually stepping us through that process. Uh, the pricing for this is $4.95 for non-members. If you are a level four member, it's $2.95. If you've already come to one of these before, and we've done two other ones, then any future uh, time that you would come is only $79. So this is about three to four hours of being able to participate with Slim, uh, hearing him step through that thinking process. So there really isn't any better way to understand the methodology outside of taking the cycle analysis workshop course, which is a great companion to this, than being able to be there right live with Slim. Now you will get a replay link as well. So I wanted to make sure that everyone's aware this is for real uh, and this is happening uh, on Tuesday. That's what I have uh, for my segments. Appreciate your time. Back to you, Slim. All right, great review on that. Uh, and I hope that uh, we have a lot of people taking advantage of that special non-recurring membership. I mean, we we just rarely do that. And you'd be able to come in for a month and see literally everything that we have. It's just fantastic for 99 bucks. And I hope that a lot of people decide that they want to watch my process. And I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in the Behind the Cycle Analysis Curtain Workshop, which is this Tuesday. So uh, you're going to want to contact me on that. Just great stuff. All right, we're going to get into our Q&A here. Uh, by the way, Matt, I think Katie needs to be let in uh, for her video. She had a little tech problem, and now she's back. So uh, she probably uh, needs a little help there. Yep, no problem. Got her back. back in. Okay, so we're going to cut off the questions right now. Uh, I have uh, questions uh, on some of the, um, uh, on just a couple of the commodities, uh, silver and natural gas. I'm going to do that. The rest of the team is going to do uh, everything that they can in the time allotted uh, in the um, uh, looking at the equity side and ETF side on some of that. So uh, we're going to try to take about 15 minutes here and bring to you as much as we can. Before I get into silver and natural gas, I want to answer some of the questions that are in here. You know, it's interesting that, and I'm after all of these years uh, of giving analysis, and I, you know, I didn't only start uh, back uh, 12 years ago when I was on Tasty Trade uh, giving analysis. When I was on the trading floor, I was one of the go-to people, people would uh, uh, come to me and say, "What do you know? What do you think, Slim, about the market?" So that's when I started to really develop uh, my abilities to do analysis in the market and to talk to people about it. And I have learned that you know, lots of times when I give analysis based on the highest probabilities that I see, it's going to turn out wrong, and there's going to be challenges to that. So. I get questions like, you know, you're, you're, what, what happens, Lim? You said this, or the cycles aren't working anymore, or the cycles never work, or something like that. And that's the kind of, you know, negatives that come, and especially at market turns when, you know, we expect certain things to happen is the highest probability, and they don't come. So a, few, a couple of those questions right in here, uh, especially from Brad. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to answer those real quickly, uh, and then... Um, get into we'll get into some of the analysis brad said the question is uh, how are you supposed to use cycle analysis when the fed is constantly interfering and then he said for me 24 24 cycle analysis has been very poor at predicting the movements the buybacks and in inflation has been trumped uh as uh, all of the lows uh, has, uh after the lows had swamped cycles in other words they weren't coming down very much because the energies were pushing uh, to the upside. Uh, and uh, he said, uh, in the last three weeks, you were looking for a period of risk in the S&P 500. You showed the past three cycles had false false moves to the upside and then moved to a lower low. And uh, we saw the period of risk is formed with a uh, very early low and shallow. And he says, in my opinion, the Fed and central banks have 
uh, around the world uh, injected uh, so much liquidity and Apple deciding to do the buyback of its own stock. So uh, implying that all of those things uh, had got in the way and that cycle analysis is not working. So when I get questions like that, I want to answer it in a way that isn't defensive because I 100% believe in the work that this team does. Uh, and that is, if you look back several months ago, when we talked about the period of risk, we actually said that the decline was likely to be shallow, said that a couple of times, and also said that it would likely be 5.3% to 8% on the downside, which is a very shallow corrective period because of what we saw as strength in the cyclical patterns. That actually happened. The decline was 5.9%. And yes, we expected that it would come down, make a lower low or test. However, once the market started to tell us different, we then began to adjust and actually turn positive once the market told us to do so. So all of the corrections uh, are not going to be as deep as we expect. All of the rallies are not going to be as high as we expect them to be. Uh, and we hope that the timing is fairly good and that the cycle patterns and support and resistances and all of those things give us the ability to have a good probability of the work. Uh, the other side of that is uh, we have a, a comment here from DJV. He says, hi, Slim. Hey, Slim, I know you're not one for victory laps, so I'll do it for you. Great analysis and call in the metals and related shares. You gave us an early Christmas gift weeks ago here when you said uh, on market week with Heckle and the team, you and the team are the best in the business. So there you go. There's somebody looking at something other than just the stock market or this little window of time in the last few weeks when the market didn't happen to go down and test those lows or get lower. So when if you have just a little, if you have tunnel vision and you're only looking at little things and you don't follow all our analysis and you don't look back at what we say on big picture analysis, you might get some sense that this is not working. I actually am 100% confident confident in the work that our team does and the style of analysis that we do. And uh, I, uh, Brad, I, I push that back to you and say, I don't think you're paying enough attention to all of the work that we do. And level two, three, and four members have all seen those changes as they came, as the indicators started to improve, as the cycle pattern started to change, and we adapted to what we were seeing as more positive. We are probably the most flexible analysts out there. There's a lot of people that want rigid analysts or when the analysts say, when the analysts say something and then it doesn't happen, they have to come out and say, well, I was wrong. So many people want to hear those words. I tell you, well, it didn't happen. It was the highest probability. And what we hope is that the highest probabilities work most of the time, which is what we expect. So that, that's my answer to all of those. Uh, DJV, thank you for the, the kudos that you gave us. And uh, I uh, wanted to answer both of those questions before I got into this. So again, I'm going to look at natural gas and the light crude market. I'm sorry, and uh, silver. And then I'll turn this over to the team. Uh, to look at the uh, uh, a lot of the equities and stuff that we're looking at. No more questions now, please, because we're going to be not have the time to do that. So this is the silver market right over here. Our upside projection was to get over 30, maybe to 31 in this move. Now, this is a, an example of, you know, a cycle that has been adjusted because it actually is moving up very early in this in this period right over here. Uh, and uh, then is it's showing us that it has potential to go to higher levels. So we adjust it because what we want to show is that it can go to uh, even higher levels. The, we're still in a rising phase. This is the gold, the corrective periods in gold and how it affects silver. We made a point that we were likely to get corrections in these periods right over here where gold was likely to correct. It did so. You saw silver come down and make that flag and then turn to the upside. There's a diamond in here that you could see, this big diamond right there. And we had this measured move in there on this on this chart uh, up to this area of 3180. It sure looks like it's going to go there, a high of 3113 so far. The bottom of this target zone right over here, and the target zone comes from the minor cycle right in here. From here to here to here, and the 78.6% and the 100% are in this zone that takes you up here to 3250. So 
still pockets right now up to the diamond measurement there, 3180, up to this level right over here, 3250. Very, very reasonable. Here is the minor supports right there. The minor supports come this low to this high to this low to this high. That's how we adjust these targets. And then uh, the, build the minor support off of this low to this peak right there. So if it pulled down over here, that would be the area we would expect it to hold pot in a positive way between 29 and 28.65. That would be uh, there. But these supports are rising as silver does rise. And this is the intermediate support right over here. You could see where gold correction over here of a dominant cycle, silver correction over here of the minor cycle, gold correction of the minor cycle cycle that says there's some weakness out over here so if i were a holder and i am a pretty sizable holder in the precious metals markets i want to do some lightening up in this time period june july up in this levels between 31 32 it gets up into here, I would expect there to be a correction. And I want to load the boat again after you get down to this corrective period out here in this August to October period, looking for that next upside move that will occur right over there. So right over here is my area. I want to lighten up on my positions, maybe sell off a little bit of my miners. I'm not selling any of my you know, uh, gold holdings, physical gold and silver. Uh, and uh, then look to reload and buy a lot more down in here. Maybe it'll be in the 29, 28 level, even down to 27 is possible after uh, you make the peaks in here. So that's a look at silver on the weekly. On the daily, you could see here, we have this upside projections right over here. It traded uh, up to that FIB extension right to that level. Here's the 78.6 that we showed you at 32.50 area. And that's kind of where I think it's going to work its way uh, up to here in the coming weeks. So silver looking really good and really fulfilling our objectives in there uh, that we saw. So great, uh, great analysis, I think. And uh, I've had lots of people writing me that they have done really, really well on these metals calls. So really glad to hear that. Natural gas. We actually took forever to make the low. We were looking for an important monthly low uh, here in this market also. And uh, here's the natural gas market. I have some FIB, extent, FIB, uh, FIB corrective levels in here. Uh, so uh, this is moving up into the resistance. We thought it would get up into the twos, 250, maybe up here, new 285. And uh, that's uh, what we still think is a pretty good probability. Now, there's a minor cycle right in here that you see right there. And uh, that might get you a pullback right out over here area that's out into the June and then probably up again. So we'll look for some uh, stalling up in this area here in these resistances and then a minor pullback into this June time frame and then probably moving up again into the uh, summer months. Here is the daily pattern right in here. Now, uh, the daily pattern, you can see this was your minor cycle right here. These minor cycles are not great. This was tough. Look at what happened here when the Slim Ribbon PO turned green, turned positive right over here. It just absolutely took off the Slim Ribbon offering the support on the upside. So that looked really good. So momentum strong there on the week, on the daily momentum turned up right over here on the weekly. Uh, that was back in April. And we talked about that. And we thought that the monthly low was being established there also and uh that is what we believe is happening so a major bottom likely in the natural gas market but you know these things don't go straight up and then you don't get to buy them again because all of a sudden they don't turn back this one we think will turn back and give a buying opportunity after all it did look horribly weak for a long period of time. That's what I'm uh, going to show you in uh, the uh, commodity side. And I'm going to turn this over to RV and Katie to answer the questions uh, on the equity side. Take it from me, please. All right, Slim. Thanks so much. Uh, I'll go ahead and start it out here and then uh, hand this off to you, Katie. Let's uh, pull up my screen first. Then we'll look at the KRE first, which is the Regional Banking Index uh, ETF. Okay, so this is our both weekly and daily cycle analysis for the KREs. Now, this one did bottom on time. There was a low that was due here, 311 to 513. We're seeing, again, as first off of this obviously large sell-off right there, that higher low basing cycle, a move through the old 
swing high here that's set in a now positive cycle that has formed with a higher cycle low versus the old low. And we're still looking for a higher high to form in this next intermediate term rising phase that we are are in right now. Uh, there's a 78.6 at 52 half. Uh, this old swing high here is at 54.47. So a positive bias on the intermediate term uh, based on our work. On the daily cycle analysis, you're seeing uh, it, you know some clear buying off this low right here. We then made the shift on the daily cycle to line up with that low as soon as we saw that buying. For those who were with us live, you you do know that. After that, we then had a, the higher low that formed here, right here. Then we curled our way back to the upside and are in now a positive trend with uh, with all three EMAs in parallel on the upside. Uh, there's a 78.6, as we said, right on 51.5. This old daily cycle high is 53.19. We're looking for a move towards 53.19. And if we see a bull flag form here, uh, we would look uh, for it to hold right around this rising trend, 50.60 to 50 to uh, 49.60 or so, and then to curl back to the upside uh, and would be targeting a move towards 53.19. If we jump over to the next one, we'll look at, let's pull this up, uh, NVDA. And what we see here is still a positive cycle structure that is in place. This is actually a right-hand translation where the high formed on the right side of that cycle bracket. And then we had a pullback that was sharp, but quick and brief, and then ended suddenly. That's usually how right-hand translations end. They end with quick cells that then suddenly end, and you would be targeting a move towards swing highs here at around 974. And on a move through that level, which seems likely at this point, there's a zone here from 1045 up to 1116. If we jump over to the daily time frame, you're seeing a bullish right-hand translation here as well. And we are looking for just a modest pullback into this rising slim ribbon. Obviously, uh, the only issue here uh, is that there is earnings. So we need to watch and see what happens post earnings. But absent of that, uh, really anything crazy happening, we'd just be looking for a modest dip here and a move to higher highs here in NVDA. We shift over to Disney. And Disney is getting interesting here because uh, there is a weekly low that is due as well. You can see it right here, 4.15 to right around uh, 5.20 or so. We are pulling back. We are in a zone here from 101.5 to right around 97 or so. We'll be watching to see if the key weekly low can form there. This is also a bullish right-hand translation here. So we are looking for this to give a pullback and then uh, would be looking for a move uh, back to the upside as it is doing right here. Shift over to the daily cycle and you will see that there are two out of phase cycle brackets overlaid on this chart. And uh, we have a low that's due here right around 524 to 610. Around here, we'll be watching to see if that key bottom uh, can form on both the short term and the intermediate term. But right now the bias, very importantly, is firmly to the, to the downside, only getting bear signals on the PO. Uh, so you can see a clear uh, bearish bias that is still in place. Very important to, again, let the low form and then would be waiting for a base to form and then watch for a turn back up. Uh, we certainly do not look at lows and, and try to buy lows. We wait for bases to form and then have a clear risk level uh, prior to, look, to looking at a long side trade idea uh, for a swing. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand this off uh, to you, Katie, for Cisco. Okay, let me share my screen. And you should be looking at the weekly chart of Cisco. We are, yep. Okay, great. So this is very interesting. Um, you can see, again, these blue vertical dashed lines represent that weekly cycle timing window when we would expect the cycle to uh, trough and then move up into the rising phase of the next cycle. So it is possible that we have formed that intermediate low here. Uh, we do have this very bearish uh, candlestick forming this week. Uh, we had earnings two days ago, so it's almost uh, approaching a gravestone doji. So it is possible that we get one more retest of this recent low or perhaps down to the cycle low support. And for that, we would have to take a closer look at the daily chart, which we'll do in a second. I 
I do want to point out that the reversal scout is still showing negative momentum in here. Now, once we do have that weekly low formed, because this cycle has retraced so deeply, we would not expect a new high to form in the next cycle. The probabilities would be um, to stall somewhere in this resistance zone let's say between the top of the resistance zone, that's the 61.8% FIB, looks like it's around 50 and change up to the 78.6% FIB around 51 and change. Now let's go over to the daily chart. Here we have uh, 35 bar cycles. You can see that this is that potential intermediate low. We got the move up in um, uh, the rising phase, a change to positive momentum with the reversal scout, as well as the slim ribbon. And then here on earnings, we have this uh, bearish engulfing. So if this is the intermediate low, then we, what we wanna see happen here is for the supports to hold and for this to form a basing cycle. That means that it would be a positively configured cycle that ends higher than where it began um, after this negatively configured cycle. If we are going to go lower or retest this, then that will not happen. We will get uh, that intermediate low perhaps out here. So right now, um, I would expect some sideways chop in here and uh, with positive momentum still, we wanna see these supports hold. So Cisco, very interesting um, cycle right now. We have to watch and see. And that will be it for me. Back to you, Slim. We're, we're all done with the charts. Okay, I'm back to you. <laughs> all right, that's going to wrap us up for the questions. I uh, For the uh, charts, I have uh, to answer one more question out there. And Roland says you had a VIX projection of around 30, as uh, I remember. Is that over now? Well, that projection was actually based on the cycle patterns that we saw that would have brought the highest probability of a move down to test the other lows and maybe even get lower. Uh, and that changed. So the upside projection, even though we think there's a corrective, uh, a minor corrective period coming in, in the stock market, and I'll show you that in just a few moments, uh, then that does change. And I, I would be surprised to see the VIX get over 15 at this point because things have changed. Now, again, our level two, three, and four members get those changes on a regular basis uh, once uh, things do change. So uh, you're asking a question, you know, you're probably not getting that kind of uh, regularity of our analysis. Uh, at least I would guess that uh, based on uh, your question. And the last one in here, uh, Mr. Seiko says, Slim, cheers to 50 years of trading to you. I just returned from Las Vegas. Champagne is on will call at Caesar's Palace. Well, I'm going to see if that's true, actually, because on June 23rd, I head to play in the World Series of Poker, as I do every single year. So we'll see if it's waiting for me there at Caesar's Palace. And uh, thanks for uh, thanks for that. That's great. Uh, and uh, if uh, if I don't happen to be able to pick it up based on the fact that I'm stuck playing in tournaments because I'm doing so well, um, thank you for that offer. So that is our Q&A for the week. Great job by everybody. All right, stock market analysis. This is the final phase of what we do here uh, in this show. Uh, my uh, projections, before we get to that, please do read this important slide. It tells you about our approach to analysis and what that means for you as you apply our work and the important concept of trade ownership. No matter where you get the information from, no matter what sense you get for how you and why you want to enter a trade, or how and why you want to exit a trade, it has to be your own decisions. If not, then you're going to be depending on other people. Your skills will not develop, uh, and you will certainly get stuck in losing trades for a longer time frame than you want to do that. So please do read this slide. And one more reminder, Matt said earlier in the show, uh, we have a workshop coming this Tuesday, May 21st uh, at 2 p.m. Eastern time. It's over three hours in length. You're going to get a view of how I approach the analysis and the futures and indexes as I share my step-by-step -step thought process. I just simply speak out loud on everything that I normally do when I do these charts every single week. 
and uh, then post them for our members. But you get to watch me do it. It's going to be grain, softs, cryptos, interest rates, treasuries, currencies, metals, energy, stock market indexes, and the VIX. I'll do a few monthlies, depending on if they're important to that analysis. Uh, so you'll see some monthly analysis, uh, weekly and daily, over 50 charts that I'm going to bring. And uh, there's several different prices for this, uh, ranging from $2, uh, $200, uh, $295 uh, for a level four members and workshop members uh, up to $495 for people that are not members at all. And then a recurring price that's only at $79. So if you take this in, you're, it's your ticket in to uh, come to Behind the Cycle Analysis uh, Curtain workshops that we do about every couple of months. Uh, and that uh, will be the uh, way that you can really learn uh, the way that I do analysis. So please do uh, write to Matt at AskSlim.com for that uh, pricing and sign up links. Uh, and we hope to see you there on Tuesday. Stock market analysis, multiple time frame analysis and projections, S&P 500 weekly and daily with our proprietary indicators. Plus, I'll take a peek at the market condition monitor. Uh, and uh, uh, Matt did a great job at looking at the market condition monitor earlier in the show, looking at a lot of different stocks and ETFs and stuff. So I'm not going to, I'm only going to show you the stock market right now, not look at uh, anything else in there. And if you want to see more things about the MCM, uh, please go do watch that section that Matt brought. Uh, on uh, our special level four membership uh, with a great demo on the market condition monitor. All right, so let's uh, switch over to the charts here. We're going to move from that natural gas chart. And instead of looking at that, uh, I'm going to uh, bring in, let me just uh, go back to that slide for a second. I just want to grab uh, this uh, chart right here and move that in and you'll be able this is the chart that our members get i'm just going to look at the s p 500 as uh, i blow this up so uh the uh i don't know what that information is so let's look at the s p uh, 500 this is the weekly chart of the s p 500 now, uh, without a doubt, um, we said very clearly that what we thought was that the market was going to have a corrective period here of 5.3% to 8% on the downside. It was 5.9% uh, at the lows. We believed that this low was not going to be the low and it would be moving to the upside and then down again one more time into late May. That was our projection, but the market ch changed and it was much stronger as it was being pushed up by even longer uh, in, uh, longer uh, energies that come out of the monthly chart. And uh, I'll show that in behind the curtain uh, if you come to that workshop. So this is revised. We thought that June, July, it said June, July here before was going to be uh, the period of strength. But now clearly it's May, June, July, as we think the markets will continue to move up. Actually, if it moves up into this July, June, July period right here, then likely that the minor cycle will bring some modest correction in this period here and then up again. So you could get the, the strength of this market up into the fall uh, as late as that uh, before it then goes into probably a Q4 correction based on what we see here. Our upside projections, even before this market turned up, were that it was going to get up into these levels. So 5,400, uh, that's 5,443, this level right over here, 5,537. These are the monthly extensions, 5,565. So 5,400 to 5,550 is the reasonable upside projection uh, for this market. Now, it's important to note that when the stock market had its major peak, uh, uh, back uh, in tw end of 21, the um, market capped GDP, the valuation of the market was 199%. Now, the economy grew, earnings grew, and uh, when that happens, those numbers get adjusted. So when you get up here into these areas of around 5,500 or so, you're going to be at over a 200% to GDP. That will be the highest valuation for the stock market ever. And that is very likely to bring a very sharp pullback after this rally. 
we're not you don't see that projection in here right now because i have no reason to give that projection now because this is positive notice in here the reversal scout turning up what when it does that that is what confirms that the uh, cycle low is in place it turned up right over here on that week right there and that uh, just as it did right over here it did right over here you get into the rising phases in this cycle so in other words this is going up this is rising phase in the minor cycle going up i don't have an anchor point in here yet so i can't really put in any supports all we know is that we're likely to continue to get higher prices uh with the market conditions as strong as they are right now so that's a lot of strength there here we see the revised upside channels uh, on the short term. We kind of call this the slim cloud that we build in here, uh, where uh, it gives us a sense for the uh, strength and weakness in the market. And when you get up into having to give it up into the higher channel up here, you really know the market is very strong. So on the bottom in here, what you see uh, is the option bias study. And it was bullish all in here uh, uh, up until about this point. Uh, and uh, then it said right here at this point, you know, at this point, it's not bullish anymore. And you would start to worry about moving to the downside as this got negative. Now, right over here, it turned neutral and then it turned bullish again. So this was the first indicator that we looked at that said, well, the market is changing and it's likely more positive. So that's what we're looking at are conditions that are much more positive based on the option biased indicator, the OBI. So again, this is saying to us, and it was saying to us over the last week, things have changed. So what's going to happen is that it's likely you're going to get some corrective period in here. Maybe that's the next few days. The uh, Sometime between, we thought end of May and early June was the potential for the correction. It's still the same timing that we were looking at. It's just that it's uh, the the uh, magnitude of the advance and the length of the advance based on cycle theory changes where the correction is likely to go to. So if the market would have actually made its peak where we expected somewhere in this resistance zone and then turned down, it would have likely tested this level and come down. But once it gets through this repair level, we had it right in there. Once it gets through there, we said it's clear that things had changed and the market much more positive. So uh, that's what we see here on the daily chart. So weekly, again, this turned up positive, this corrective period right there over, we enter into the period of strength, which is likely to go out into Q3 with probably some dip out over here in the summer. That's what that looks like. You have this very powerful pattern right in here with the OBI, the option bias indicator, telling you to uh, uh, bias your option positions to the long side, just as it did through this whole long period right over there. And uh, when I move to the uh, momentum condition right over here on May 6th, is where the momentum condition turned bullish. So that was 11 calendar days ago that we got the next warning, or maybe that was earlier than the OBI, that said things had changed and we were respectful of that. And here's your two hour chart in here. And on the bottom is the ASLIM market condition indicator. This is a very unique indicator in that when it is trading under the minus 25 level, which is right here, it's negative and it crosses into there and it gives us a warning that it's testing. This is if the market was still negative and it were there were outs there were longer forces pushing to the downside, it would tell us that you know it was bad and it would move back under the minus 25. Once it crosses over the positive 25, the, it then tells us it's a positive or bullish signal. When you look at the Slim Ribbon PO here on the two hour chart, all of these bullish signals were telling us with the market condition indicator and the, the Slim Ribbon and the Slim Ribbon PO positive and these upside momentum signals, it was telling us positive things. So for all of you people out there that may be watching this and saying, well, Slim, you said it was gonna go down, well, we also adjusted based on all of our indicators and getting through that important level right over here on the weekly chart. 
right there, I'm sorry, on the daily chart right over here, that repair level 5201, that told us positive uh, here on the market condition indicator, positive right over here on momentum, positive right over here on the two hour charts and the market condition indicator. All of those things told us that things were changing and that's really what we wanna do is be aware, listen to the language of the market, listen to it talking to you and telling you that something is different than the expectations. And that will go a long way to getting you out of positions when the analysis is no longer supportive of the position that you have on. And I think that's really so uh, important in the lesson in here. Let's take a look here as we switch over to the market condition monitor. Again, Matt did a great job in showing you the conditions uh, in there. Now, if you look here, May 10th, it turned from bullish to very bullish. It was bullish on around May 3rd, turned to very bullish. This was May 13th, May 14th, May 10th. That's when it went, uh, it went around May 3rd or to May 6th, depending on the index, from neutral to bullish. And then it turned to very bullish. And you can see that on the short term. Here, looking at the intermediate term right there, you can see all of them in very bullish condition on the intermediate term there. On the near term, which is looking at swing traders, uh, you know, that are in positions for maybe a couple of days, you can see that uh, the market now getting into a little corrective period right over here with the uh, Dow stronger than the other indexes that have now turned neutral. And for those of you that are day traders right over here, that's the one you'd look at on the interday and you can see neutral to bearish right in here, except for the diamonds. Those are still bullish as they are buying the Dow stock. So really important. And I showed you in the very beginning of the show uh, that the um, day trader uh, or looking at the cockpit or the review of the cockpit for this week really gave you a good sense for these type of indicators and when things in a particular index were negative or positive uh, on the interday basis. So that's my analysis on the stock market. Uh, for uh, today, uh, I hope that you thought that very, very interesting uh, and valuable to you. So uh, the if you want to learn about Aslim, uh, you can learn from our amazing team of professionals. Go to aslim.com, look around at our broad education analysis for traders and investors. And don't forget to take advantage of the $99 non-recurring special for level four, where you get just about everything that we do, except for the day trader. That's a separate uh, a membership. So uh, $99 non-recurring, please do sign up for that. And uh, then after that, we're even gonna offer you a special to stay with us. So uh, please do sign up for that. Team, that's it. We went through it all. You got any last words? Wow, we covered a lot of ground. I'm sure did. Great job, everybody. Thanks so much yeah. for joining. Yeah. And have a great weekend. Yeah. Uh, thanks to all of you. And don't forget, any questions, write to Matt at AskLim.com. See you in a couple of weeks.